All right, right. so we're uh, on the bow of the interchange here, boat, boat here, and uh, we've got a really nice view of the start line. And on my right, I've got a uh, guy who's the coach for the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, and on my left, I've got Elton Walker, who coaches for the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. They're going to talk us a bit through what the sailors are looking at today, um, different strategies and tactics for this start, um, and we'll try and get some footage of it. So, um, over to you guys. Uh, Port Ian boat looks a little slow and early for entry. They're trying to kill time here. So that's almost early entry by boat four. Uh, nice entry on boat seven on starboard. So we've got Emma May coming in from the port hand side and uh, on the starboard side we've got our New Caledonian team, uh, LaRue. Uh, and here we go. It looks like we're going to have a classic uh, match racing dial up, which is what uh, all punters uh, expect to see in match racing. Nice. Probably going to be green though. The white flag flown, we'll see what the umpires make of it. The room. Oh. Uh, blue penalty. So the umpires have agreed with LaRue. Well, LaRue's claimed that uh, Blue didn't complete the attack in time. Had to take avoiding action before they completed on the starboard. So, just explain to us, Evan, um, the difference between match racing penalties and the sort of penalties that we see in team uh, fleet racing. So, these penalties are displayed by the umpires. Uh, as you can see there, there's a blue flag which represents a penalty being carried by May. And it's carried throughout the race. Um, they can carry out the penalty at any point before the finish. If they get a second, they have to do that one immediately. And if the other team gets a penalty, it offsets the one being carried. Right, so you don't have to do the penalty straight away. You can carry it and pick the time that suits you best. Yeah. Fantastic. So what are we seeing seeing here, Guy? Talk us through what the skippers will be thinking so, about at this um, point. Yeah, uh, match racing is all about time and distance back to the line. So the reason they circle is to, is to try and kill a bit of time. And you're trying to pick a moment um, to lead back to the line uh, and probably in a position in front because in the light edge you didn't want to lead in. Um, so the idea is, is that the trailing boat's trying to force the leading boat away from the line and the uh, chasing boat, uh, the, the head boat's trying to get separation so they've got, they can clear the jibe and lead back to the line. How much time do we have to start? So we've got uh, 1.55 back to, to start. Okay, so it's probably a minute to the pin. It's roughly a good time to lead back. So we'll see how the girls do here, killing the time. On the racetrack, it looks like there's a little bit better pressure on the left side, but this course is quite shift favoured or shift bias. So in the last start, it was left phase at the start. The boats were in a rush to go on the port. Looks like it's left though. So the boats have got to be uh, careful here that they don't end up uh, below pin lay and can't lay the pin. Uh, Starboard. If they uh, can't lay the pin on starboard, they'll be attacking uh, on support, and that's uh, a high risk maneuver. So, coming up to a minute, maybe 30 seconds to sail to the pin. May has quite a lot on here to kill the time before the start. Now, she should be trying to close the gauge. So, obviously, uh, Boat 7 likes the right, so they want to pick the right, that's why they're staying high. Uh, the, the aim of boat four is here is to get as close to boat seven as they can. She hasn't done a very good job of that so far. So boat seven's done nice work to live to live there. So if, if you're talking about the the shifts determining at different points which side of the course is favoured, do you need to be adjusting your strategy in the pre-start, or is it something that you set before you enter? Yeah, so roughly about the one minute mark in this start, the teams needed to confirm what side of the start line they wanted, or what side of their opponent they wanted to start. Emma's got a little bit early here, she's under pin lay. Not sure how long she has. That's the start. And there's the start. So, uh, good time and distance by boat seven. Yeah. And um, boat four had uh, the short end of the line to play with, so they didn't have a lot of room to uh, either lay the pin on uh, starboard, or they had to tack. So, Guy, if you're boat four now, what's your strategy going to be looking up the work to try and make back from probably not an ideal start? 
Well, the whole aim is, is you, you want to try and get a split going so you're on opposite tacks and, uh, you, and hopefully you uh, end up on the right side of the course with the, with the right shift. Just trying to create leverage. Yeah. Um, so seven should um, tack onto four here, then four should, will go directly into a tack to get a split going. So hopefully they can you know, maybe step into a bit of a left shift and, and close up the game. And that's exactly the strategy that we're just seeing. So the first priority for boat four is to keep clear air. <clears throat> so you won't see them sit in the gas at boat seven. Next is where the pressure is probably. So there's a little bit more pressure left from what I can see here, but it might just be the light. And the next thing is which tack is the longest tack going upwind. So they're a little bit left of the centre of the course. So boat seven is going to try and force May to the left, to the short side of the course. May is trying to get back to the middle of the course. And that'd be why Seven is landing directly on top of May. Yeah. Um, onto starboard tack, uh, port tack, sorry. Force her out on starboard like that towards the ley line. Yeah. yeah. We've got uh, lap two of our previous race coming in now. We might uh, take that opportunity to cut it off and we'll see, we might pick it up um, for lap two in a few minutes.